Star Citizen is nowhere near complete, but every patch brings us a little bit closer to a more finished game, albeit sometimes at a slower pace than some of us wish. Still though, today players can enjoy a number of professions and activities that offer enough gameplay to keep at least some of us busy for a while. However, sooner or later players inevitably run up against the wall that is the unfinished state of Star Citizen. Put plainly, there really isn't much progression after you play the few loops that there are, let alone an end goal or end game. And arguably, since all the ships are available on the website for purchase with real money, it makes them a bit counterfeit as a form of end game stuff. So then what is it exactly that our chosen professions are going to add up to? More accurately, what goal do we strive for as an organization of players? Well, one possibility would be stations or organization owned stations. So join me then on this dive into what the future might hold for Star Citizen when it comes to players building stations. But don't forget that if by the end you think I did a good job with this video and you think I deserve it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. You can also find me over on my Twitch channel by the same name as well as on TikTok and Twitter. Uh, X. Now it's called X. So to be upfront with you here, very little of Star Citizen's planned endgame is actually understood. The only really significant thing they've ever discussed was the ability for us to obtain the Bengal Carrier in the game, something that would only exist in four different locations and thus would be limited in the ability for Oryx to obtain them. They would also require being captured and repaired, so it's not something that you can just buy. However, only a few orgs are likely ever going to have the resources to compete for it. And once it's obtained, the only way that anybody else is going to get their hands on it is if they fight the org that has it for that big ship. And that surely is going to be exciting for those competing for the Bengal. But as I said, there's only so many of them and there's going to need to be something else for people to do, some other type of endgame as an alternative or to do alongside seeking the Bengal. Well, it just might be player-owned stations, at least organization-owned stations to be more specific. These would be smaller stations than what we have now, Lagrange points or floating around planets and moons. These wouldn't compete necessarily with them, but would offer some benefits to encourage players and organizations to get them. They could, say for example, offer larger organization storage for ships, money, and vehicles. They could have org headquarters, a place to call home, to meet and to decorate, a place to respawn, a tax collection source for them to make money, a manufacturing base for crafting the things that you need as well as selling them, a place to make ship parts and ship weapons, character armor, character weapons, and even ship industrial parts. There are frankly a lot of opportunities and benefits that you could tag along with stations. But the actual gameplay is going to come along with the process of getting it, maintaining it, and defending it. So let's go through the potential process of getting a station that could be within the bounds of Star Citizen's universe and mechanics as we know them today. So the first phase would be in choosing the location for your organization to establish a station. Stations wouldn't come pre-built. These are something that organizations would have to build, and I envision this happening in two ways for getting a place to build a station. The first option would be to find a place in a safe and controlled area of space, somewhere in what you might call high sec or high security space, a place like the Stanton system. But this option would have a rental only option for those claims. You couldn't own them as an organization since the space was already owned by an either government organization or private organization from the NPC factions. But the benefit of this would be good security as well as high traffic areas that could yield good profits for the owning organization. There would however be only a set number of locations at Lagrange points, moons, and planet orbital points that you could obtain as an org, and probably there should be a maximum amount of these things that you could actually claim so that you would leave the place open for other people to give it a try. It would also not require just currency, but also reputation with the owning NPC faction. You would have to be in good standing with them in order to qualify to make the claim. Everyone in the org then would need to work together to gain a reputation with that organization so that they could get the cash to get the claim. The second option might be a little bit more exciting. 
It would involve you going to a lower security area that was less controlled and maybe unowned by any official organization. These systems would have high potential for profits due to rare resources and low competition, but importantly, the risk would be very high. Here then, instead of paying an organization for the claim, you would have to go there and claim it yourself while it's contested by either players or NPCs. Alternatively, if the area is already claimed by an NPC pirate faction like, say, the Ninetales, then you would have to have good rep with them in order to not incur constant attacks on your station. These are the two options then for both combat and non-combat, lawful and unlawful players who will now all have methods to get into this endgame content as an organization. Getting a claim though is only the start, and the real work would begin after that. So let's move on to the next phase. In this phase, the construction would begin, and it would involve industrial players as well as combat players if the station is located in hostile, contested space. The industrial focused players would be tasked with obtaining specific kinds of resources needed for the manufacture of the main superstructure, or the foundation if you will, of the organization's station. While these resources are collected and deposited on location, if the claim is in hostile space, the collection point may need to be defended. Defense could come in the form of either players or player built turrets. This wouldn't be a very short phase, it would require a great deal of resources and time of an organization to complete, weeks and maybe months. The more players, the faster the resources could be collected, but the build time I would say should be a function of an automated mechanic for the station slowly appearing as resources are gathered. I would prefer it not to involve an expensive player ship if possible, but it's inevitable that it might, seeing as how that's how Star Citizen funds the project, so we might see an alternate version then of the Pioneer that builds these stations. Once the main superstructure is finally complete, the cladding is built, the outside is done, it would then be time to start filling the station with components that augment its functionality as well as building up the station's defenses to defend it while you continue to build the inside. Let's move on then to phase three. With the initial phase complete, all you would have is a basic landing pad, maybe a hangar, with a basic lobby and a basic level of inventory for the orc. To get the station to be profitable though is going to require a bit more time. Station customization and specialization would then be necessary. The first step in this phase might be to create an administration office, which would enable you to tax the refueling and repair modules that you could build onto the station to repair and refuel ships that stop by. This could begin to create a source of income for the organization to pay for the initial upkeep and cost of the station. Next though would be the specialization of it through specialized facilities. For organizations that do industrial stuff, they might install a small refinery and resource collection pod for depositing goods. They might also install things to sell those goods, like kiosks to sell stuff to players visiting. The creation of other manufacturing modules could also be added, things that could create weapon modules and modules for ships. It could also be used to be sold again for a profit or to supply org activities. Internally, the org might also then choose to add facilities like food cellars, tabs for logging on and off, and probably some basic medical facilities that could maybe have one bed that allows you to recover somebody who's died. I don't want to make this too much like an alternate to main stations, it still needs to be balanced to make those main stations better than the ones that orgs can have, at least in my view. Then you might also say add on additional landing pads or additional hangars to support more player ships and more player inventory. But the customization of the interior could be beyond just utilitarian. Adding stuff like bars and additional places to lounge with the org would also be a welcome part of this functionality. Maybe using the player facing version of Rastar to organize the internal layout to the preference of the organization. However, for the sake of balance, there would also need to be a limit to the station's module amount. Again, to prevent these stations from overshadowing the main NPC faction stations. There would also probably need to be a mechanic to give benefits for specialization. Say for example, the station has mostly refineries, it could boost the refining capability of that station for the orc. And now it's time to move on to the final phase, because after you've customized your station, that's not the end of it. The final phase would be maintenance, defense, and fees. 
Once a station has been fully customized and built to the organization's specifications, the major gameplay surrounding the station will involve maintaining the station and defending it from various foes. Additionally, as modules are added, the rental fee and maintenance upkeep would also increase. If CIG wanted to get really in-depth with it, they could also do things like involve the maintenance with the engineering mechanics that they are planning to integrate, where modules and fuses have durability that results in them needing to be replaced after a duration of time or after they've been damaged. So then, as you might guess, my idea is also to make these stations vulnerable, as permanent stations would lead to all the available slots on all the servers eventually being taken and leaving no room for new orgs to participate. Simply uncapping the amount of locations you can have for stations would also lead to some pretty undesirable effects. I would guess that you'd get an overpopulation of invulnerable stations, cluttering every single system eventually. I saw it happen with Star Wars Galaxies with player-owned cities before they eventually were cleaned up. Stations then in high security would occasionally be attacked by pirates, but their primary drain would be in the rental fees and maintenance fees. Being in high security and having high traffic would lead to a lot of wear and tear, meaning that a station that's not being actively maintained would very quickly become inoperable and eventually would be condemned by the local authorities, leaving the owning organization a set duration of time to return and fix the station and pay the outstanding fees, lest the station will be dismantled, leaving that location open for others to claim. For low security stations, their issues would be in another area. It would be in resisting both player and NPC attacks. In order for this to be fair though, those across the globe in different time zones would need to have some time to react to their station being attacked. So my proposal would be for them to adapt something like what EVE Online did, where you're given a set amount of time after the station has been attacked. The way it works is that when the station is attacked by NPCs or players, they initiate this invulnerability by damaging the station and destroying defensive structures like turrets, for example. Once the damage threshold is met, the station then becomes invulnerable, giving that one to two day duration for the other organization to mount a defense. This will of course mean that high security stations would be very hard to siege as attackers would have to constantly contend with the security forces of that system in the form of both NPCs and non-org related player bounty hunters. Again though, these high sec stations would have a steep rental and maintenance cost associated with them, so they have to deal with their own set of issues. This final phase then is meant to be a constant activity for the organization that owns it. It's the end game content. It will constantly require an influx of new materials and money to support its existence, driving organization activities and giving them some semblance of agency over the universe of Star Citizen. It will be the nexus of the player organization where you can build your organization's wealth, support your organization's activities, whatever they might be. It might also be an important way to have a place to call home for your org, a place that you can gather, a place where you can have your logo outside the station and on the door. But I think with all of this, it doesn't actually just need to be stations. I wanted to use that as an example because it's not been discussed before. It can also be applied to ground outposts owned by orgs. All of these mechanics I've discussed could be part of those outposts. In fact, I think that they should be. And it should also be part of the Bengals end game mechanics in, in my opinion. But what do you think? How does this kind of end game content driving organization activities sound? Or do you feel that a single player should be able to do every bit of content in Star Citizen without needing anybody's help? I personally don't think that that's the point of MMOs, but I know some people might have that perspective. Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you like this video, you know what to do. I hope to see you guys in the next one.